y'all it's a project photography back with another video and today people today before we get started make sure you follow all my socials down in the link below but today we are going to be focusing on color grading and color correction how do you get perfect colors in your landscape photography but one thing i want to note before we start is that in order to get perfect colors you definitely want to make sure you get the right colors in camera because we can only do so much after post and it's only meant to make you know minor and relatively minor adjustments at least so I have a video actually explaining how to get perfect colors in your landscape photography when it comes to like on location. So it's gonna be put up right here. But generally speaking, you wanna shoot sunset or sunrise, but there's a lot more other things that I talk about in the video. So go ahead and check it out. But now let's just say you've gotten the perfect photo in camera and now you're ready to edit in Lightroom. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about what affects color, HSL, and then color grading. So those are the three main topics. With that being said, let's jump right into what affects color. So when I'm talking about this, I'm referring to all of these uh, different adjustments on the right here. So that includes exposure, uh, shadows, blacks, dehazing, and so forth. So let's go ahead and start with the most obvious one, which is white balance and tint. And for me, when, I'm, when I am messing with the white balance and tint, I am not intending it to be a part of my main color grading, in the sense that I'm not using it for artistic purposes. I'm using it to, in order to get a nice base for when we do start going ahead and color grading because it's really hard to make a really accurate color grade when we're working with inconsistent white balances and tint. So for me, I just wanna get it to be as natural as possible. Um, something that looks good, you really don't have to mess with it too much. Main thing that I really wanna focus on here is that contrast will generally add more color, more saturation at least to your images. So when I'm talking about contrast, I don't really mean this contrast slider or all right, honestly, that will affect it, but I don't touch that generally. So what I'm talking about is adding in your own contrast, like adding in the highlights, decreasing the shadows, adding in some white here, decreasing those blacks, things like clarity and dehazing. And these different factors will generally affect how the colors look. So as you can see, uh, if you take a look at that versus here, we have a little bit brighter in terms of colors and a little more saturated. So highlights and whites and exposure won't necessarily increase color in your image, but they're definitely needed to balance out the exposure when you're messing with those shadows and those blacks. And especially, especially dehazing will definitely affect how the colors turn out. For example, you can see right here, right here in the top left hand corner with the blue, it has definitely gotten far more saturated the more we turn up our dehazing. So those are just definitely some notes that I want you to take forward. Uh, and for me, I definitely mess with vibrance much more than I do with saturation. I rarely, rarely, I, I pretty much never touch saturation because I feel like it can be kind of overwhelming and it just doesn't look as pleasing as vibrance for me. So it's a personal preference, but those will definitely affect how your colors turn out. So now let's jump right into HSL, which stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. And you can find that right here in the bottom. What essentially this is, is you're affecting the different colors in the actual image itself and you can affect specific colors. Let's just say, for example, for hue, let's just say the blues here. If I would just want to affect the blues, it will change how the color will actually look and that it will affect to the saturation as well as luminance. So now let's talk about hue in particular and I just want to give you guys a caveat. I have not studied the color theory, so if I'm saying things wrong, then that's why. But generally speaking, the hue will affect how the actual color will look. For example, this blue right here, I can make it look a little more purple, a little more blue. And this is incredibly useful for changing how the sky looks, especially for me or different aspects of it. For example, like I have to change some of the orange sometimes because I feel like sometimes it can be leaning a little bit too more on the yellow side, a little too much to the red side. So we can definitely change those. And for me, I think this is a really good tool because for example, if you want a nice purple feel to your images, where you're shooting a sunset and you want to exaggerate more of that feel, you can definitely go in here in the blue, change it a little more purple as you can see, definitely affects how it looks and feels. And then we go on a saturation here and this is quite obvious, it affects how saturated that a specific color is and then luminous just increases the brightness or makes it a little darker. But for me, the best tool that I like to use when it comes to HSL is this little thing right here. So what you can do is click on it and then go onto the photo itself and then move up or down in order to affect it. So as you can see, I'm moving my mouse pad up or down and it's going to affect how the colors themselves will turn out. And I like this because I don't have to like guess what exactly color I'm changing when it comes to these colors on the side here. I can simply just pick this up and directly affect 
how that color is going to look. For example, this bottom part here with this cliff edge directly affecting it. And the thing I like about this is that it is much more precise than just doing, let's just say the yellow, right? Because now, as you saw there, it changed multiple different colors. Like for example, the orange and the yellow is changing because it recognizes that both of those things are in there. So that's definitely the tool that I use the most when it comes to HSL. So that's essentially it for HSL. Make sure that when you're changing the image that you match it to what your vision is and so forth. So the next part that we're gonna be talking about is color grading. But before we go to that, I wanna show you guys a service that I am offering that can help a lot of photographers improve their landscape photography. And if you're watching this video, I know for a fact that you want to improve your landscape photography. So the service that I'm offering is a photo critiquing service where you send in your image, I go ahead and take a look at it and give you my feedback on what I think can be improved for the next shoot and so forth. This will generally help you improve your landscape photography and as someone who's been doing it for over seven years, I wanna give you guys my advice and help you improve as landscape photographers. So if you are interested, go ahead and feel free to click the link down in the description bar below to check out the photo critiquing service. And hopefully you guys send me your photos and I will help you guys improve your landscape photography. So now let's jump right into color grading. And for me, this is probably where we get the most effect when it comes to introducing new colors into our landscape, because now we can directly affect how the colors will look. For example, for here we see a lot of the highlight changes. And what I like to do is I like to increase the saturation to 100 and find the color that I feel like matches the best with the scene. So for me, I got hue 47, and then we're gonna go ahead and change the saturation to exaggerate a lot of those colors. And as you can see here, if we turn this on and off, it's very slight, but for me, it definitely affects the overall feel of how the image comes out. When it comes to color grading, just like anything else, I would avoid going overboard on it, make it look as natural as possible, because when it comes to landscape photography, we're showcasing the landscape in the way that we see it as photographers. And some days it might just be a little more saturated than it might show up. For me, I think, let's just say a hue of, I like to go a little bit warmer. So we're gonna go to hue 36 saturation. We'll probably bring it down to maybe like a, right there is fine. So it's like a 15, as you can see, there are the changes. And you can make changes to the highlights, mid-tones as well as shadows. And I usually do mainly mid-tones and highlights, but definitely feel free to mess with those shadows if you would like. So the reason why I like to go to saturation 100 first is because I wanna see how the colors will affect the image. It just gives me a more accurate representation of what the colors will do to the image itself. So let's do something like that. And then we can do, maybe because I think the shadows is a little cooler, maybe we can do something like that that looks cool. And then we can go ahead and affect it like that. So this is what it looks like without the color grade. This is what it looks like before. So as you can see, very small, minute changes. But when it comes to landscape photography, those small minute changes can definitely add up over time. And now don't feel like you have to use those exact hues, values, and whatever. If you wanna go for a more cooler image, you can definitely do that. For example, if we just go here and then here, we can definitely affect this and make it look a lot cooler than it probably is. And you can essentially get any color that you want here. It's the entire color wheel. And I honestly think that you should just use it to make it your own and use your own artistic style in it and however you see it being fit. So for example, here we got something a little bit cooler. I like to generally stay with more warmer tones because that's how I like to present my landscape photography. So yeah, guys, that is essentially my guide to colors when it comes to Lightroom. It's actually not that complicated and there's not that many things. There are other things, for example, that I personally do not touch, like you can mess with this with the tone curve. I personally don't touch it because I feel like color grading and HSL do more than enough for me but you feel free to mess around with it and find what tools work for you. So hopefully you took something out of this and hopefully you can help make your landscape photography better. But anyways, guys, make sure to check out the photo critiques down in the description bar below. And if you enjoy the video, please feel free to rate, comment, subscribe. And with that being said, thank you guys for experiencing the world with me today and I'll catch you guys in the next one.